Okay, now we're going to do a video about what you'd actually do in the event of different sort of gas situations and what sort of steps you should take. Now, depending on what sort of gas you're exposed to and everything like that, you might have to do different things. And as I've said many times, against nerve agents, your survival chances are very, very low. So I'm not really going to do a video on how to survive nerve agents, because unless you've got your atropine injected, got your uh, CBRN gear on before the gas really hits you, you haven't got much of a chance at all. So, um, let's have a look at sort of things like chlorine or mustard gas and things like that. Vapors that are denser and heavier than air for the most part, and we're going to assume that you've been able to smell them, or you've actually been able to see them due to the fact that you know they're a bit off-coloured, so the air, and they're quite dense. So, okay, if you're outside, what you want to do is get into a building and get to the highest floor possible, ideally. The reason is that obviously gases that are denser than air sink. So, if you go to a higher floor, it's harder for the vapour to actually get at you. Now obviously if you're in a building and it starts flooding with vapour you want to get outside because vapours are more concentrated indoors and outdoors but assuming that for whatever reason some vapours appeared on the street and you're in an urban area you definitely want to get upstairs in a building the, re the higher the better because as I said in things like tower blocks and um, you know just buildings with lots of floors you'll definitely be higher than the vapour if you're outside in the countryside you want to go up hills and things like that if the vapor's not too high, I guess climbing a tree or something like that might work, but for the most part you actually want to get to higher ground, just simply because when vapor's dense in there, it sits low. In World War One, lots of these chemical weapons would actually fill shell holes and trenches, um, rather than actually, you know, billowing across open ground. So, that's what you do if you're outside primarily. Now, if you're in your house and there's a chemical um, sort of vapor around, if you think you've got a good chance of being able to escape it, then of course go for it. But you obviously don't want to go downwind of it. The reason being, if you're going downwind of it, it'll constantly be blowing in your direction. You'll be inhaling more of it than you would have done otherwise. So you want to move in a direction that the wind isn't blowing, so you can try and get away from the vapor and it doesn't blow in your direction. But obviously, as the wind can change at any time, that's not a um, you know really a given that that's a great idea if you've got a car obviously trying to get away by car is better than on foot because you can move away faster you can see all your windows if you're in a car though make sure you obviously turn off your internal air blower you don't want the car pulling in air from the outside and blowing it into the car as much as possible so there's that if you are inside however what you want to do is if you've got time put plastic sheeting across the windows and stuff like that tarps anything like that and also get cloths or clothes, you know, anything like that, towels, soak them with water and lay them against like the cracks under doors, around window frames, things like that. The reason is often damp cloth is very good at actually stopping vapour seeping in. In the event that you there is a lot of vapour around, you're actually generally safe for staying in your house and trying to fortify it against the gas coming in than you are um, actually making a run for it. Because if, there, if there's a lot of it and you're trapped in open ground of gas, that's not a very good, you know, survive a lot. So, let's say you actually survive this sort of thing and you can't get to emergency service straight away, obviously. And if you've got a respirator with an ABEC type filter on a multi-gas filter, that's when I'd advise, obviously, if there's any sort of gas, shoving that on first thing first. If you've got time to get an NVC suit on or something like that, obviously do that as well. As I've said before, rain clothes, waterproof clothes are a really good thing to put on in the case of a sort of gas attack or, you know, gas leak. Because lots of the chemical weapons that can uh, kill you or damage your body through skin contact can't penetrate thick waterproof clothing. So simply having that on will protect you. So anyway, back to the subject of... You survive the initial gas thing, but you can't get to emergency services. What do you do? Firstly, you take all your clothes off. Cutting them off is actually better than trying to pull them over your head. Obviously, if I pulled a jumper over my head um, and that was soaked with some sort of agent, I'm then risking getting that in my eyes and hair and whatever else. But regardless, get the clothes off. If you've got a shower or whatever, start showering. Um, basically, what you want to do is try and get as much of the chemical residue off your skin that might be on there as possible. Sadly, lots of people have actually died in gas sort of attack type scenarios or gas leak scenarios where gas they've come into contact with gas, they've survived the initial gas attack, but their clothes have become soaked through with the vapour. They've not realised, and because they've left their clothes on, they're constantly inhaling vapour coming off the clothes, and the damp clothes of the gas all over it obviously is seeping into the skin constantly. So make sure you take your clothes off and shower. <clears throat> 
thoroughly, you know, shower as long as possible if you don't have any problem. But stuff, if you've got obviously decontamination powder that's come with a mask you've bought or something like that, or you happen to own some, obviously sprinkle that all over yourself like it's talcum powder, but obviously as I was saying, with most chemical weapons, washing yourself is a much better bet than not doing it and don't stay in the clothes you're in. Obviously, as soon as it's safe to do so, what you want to do is go to emergency services and tell them you've been exposed to maybe an unknown chemical. Uh, explain the situation and then they should hopefully have doctors that can start testing you for things in your blood, give you potentially things, help treat you if you've been exposed to various kind of chemical weapons. But obviously the worst thing you can do is panic because if you panic uh, you're much more likely to do something stupid, um, you know, and injure yourself or kill yourself that way or kill other people. And one thing you have to be very aware of is in the event of many of these things lots of people stampede when they stampede that's very dangerous because obviously lots of people are crushed to death and things like that not actually killed from the gas but they're killed from the ensuing panic so what you want to do is try and keep a level head understand how lots of the gas and vapors spread how wind blows them around and try and you know keep out the direction that the wind's blowing obviously get to higher ground if it's a gas that's dense from there obviously in a lot of these scenarios you're not going to really know what you're in t you know in contact with so obviously that's why you just generally want to follow the best rules you can and hope for the best. As I've said before, if something like VX is dropped on a civilian area and you have no warning it's coming, you're screwed. You're not going to stand a chance. So that's why I don't really agree with all the people who take lots and lots of countermeasures for nerve agents when it's going to get them regardless. I wouldn't really worry about something so deadly as that. It's the same reason I wouldn't particularly worry if a nuke was dropped on my head because you're not going to survive it, so I plan to survive it plan to survive the things you actually can survive. Hopefully that's been helpful. As I said, there's nothing too scientific in this. It's basically don't panic, keep away from the gas, elevate yourself if you can, and don't be downwind of the gas. Once you're out of the gas, take all your clothes off and shower. You know, make sure you definitely get all your skin washed down because you don't want to you know have any clothes with vapour in still or vapour on your skin where it's you know settled and then get to a medical you know, emergency centre as soon as possible, a hospital or whatever else. Tell them you've been exposed to something and let them do all their tests and whatever they're going to do.